My name is Katrina McCorkle, and I have one daughter who's 13 that I'm homeschooling for the first year this year. And since you're so fresh uh, to homeschooling, let's, uh, let's just talk about like, what has been one kind of like uh, struggle that you've had and how have you kind of overcome that? How have you found the resources for that? I've had a hard time letting it be more simple. I'm trying to complicate a lot of the things, I think. And when we're doing field trips and whatnot, I'm trying to make sure that they're learning a ton of stuff. And that's the other woman that I'm schooling with who's had a lot of experience with it. She's like, you just have to let them, let them be. And organically, they're going to be learning things. You don't have to be building these huge curriculums around going to the art museum. <laughs> so me just trying to let it, uh, let it be more um, relaxed has been probably my biggest challenge. Well, I think it's such a, you know, a, a unique case to case kind of basis. And, you know, six weeks in, it kind of takes you a while to, you know, work out all the kinks until you figure Definitely. out kind of how to do it. So, but are you, are you interested in continuing to homeschool? I would definitely if my daughter's, um, if that's what she decides to do, she does have the option to do high school next year. Um, but I would be happy to continue doing the homeschooling. I enjoy it and I think it's more efficient than public school probably. Um, yeah, I would definitely continue doing it. How would you kind of compare some of the, you know, the ability to choose your own curriculum versus kind of the curriculum that you've seen in public schools? This particular one that we have, um, it does involve a lot of critical thinking, which I don't think is encouraged as much in public school as I would like to see. And so um, there's a lot of debate between the two girls, uh, which is another reason why I like having this more pod situation so the girls could actually have conversations back and forth and it's not her just having these discussions with me, they're more same level. So what does a normal day-to-day -day kind of schedule look like for you and your daughter now that you've started homeschooling? We start around nine um, and then are done, I don't know, probably close to 11.30 or 12, take a break. And then anything that we have left over, then she'll continue doing, like she has a big project right now. She's working on building a newspaper for the mid 18th century. So um, that's what she's doing right now because all of her just daily schoolwork is done. Um, and then she's got animals out at a farm. So we go in the afternoon and go do farm chores and then come back and she does her homework for the next day, which is just reading. And so you mentioned a farm. I mean, that, that's actually really cool. Uh, what, um, what are some of her like extracurricular activities? Uh, so she's raising these cows for show. Um, she has two of them. She's also into theater. So once a week she goes to an in-person uh, theater class at a studio downtown Sarasota. Um, and she's also in a golf clinic, which is just meets once a week also. Um, and then additionally, she's just recently joined like a homeschool social group. And so those kids get together once or twice a week and go to the coffee shop or the movies or something like that, just to hang out and be social. What piece of advice would you have for a parent or parents that are just getting into homeschooling right now? It's definitely not as frightening as I thought it was going to be. Um, and there, there's also a lot of help out there. The people that I know who have done it for a long time, I had never really discussed homeschooling with them before because I didn't need to. And uh, everyone's super helpful. Everyone's been very kind and nice. It's a very um, welcoming community. So I would say just not to be, not to fear it. It's not as scary as it may seem. <laughs> so I just wanted to touch in for one second about what you were saying about like the like pol politics in um, the public school system. Could you like expand on that just a little bit? Well, and particularly she was in a Montessori school, which is a very liberal setting um, that again, often just one side is presented of situations. So um, if they would be doing a unit study, she could come home and be telling me all about it. And I could tell from her story 
that they were really only getting one point of view from the story. So I just think it's important that they have both sides of the story so they can have an educated opinion. Yeah, I've definitely heard that quite a lot about people just maybe disagreeing a little bit with what is taught, not having like full control over that. Right. Um, at least at their discretion as their parent, you know. Sure. Um, one other interesting thing that you said too um, earlier was that, um, you know, having to put a kid in, in school for six plus hours, whereas your daughter's able to get her work done a lot earlier when you're homeschooling. Mm-hmm. Um, so would you say that's kind of like a benefit because she can work on other stuff and get her stuff done earlier? Definitely. Yeah, I think it's definitely a benefit. And I think that it's showing her that um, those time management skills really pay off opposed to if she's using time management in a classroom, all right, she's done, but then she's still got to sit there and wait for everybody else to finish before she can start something else. So this, yeah, that's another thing that we've been working on is when she's reading, she's got the list of questions that she's going to need to cover the next day. Why not have those questions in your lap as you're reading? You can be taking notes. That's So when we're having the discussion the next day, it's just there and we can just do it instead of, uh, forgot and flipping back and, you know, so it's just, um, yeah, I think it's definitely, it's good. And I don't know that their brains really can stay, um, engaged for six and a half hours after four hours, she's kind of tapped out and we got to take a break, you know, and if there's something else that we need to do, then she can recharge and start up after dinner. But yeah, I think that's, that's a lot of time for them to be sitting there and thinking. A common concern that uh, people have in the public school system on homeschooling is socialization. Mm-hmm. Being a person that had her in an in-person classroom setting earlier, transitioning to homeschooling now, what is your opinion on that? With her being in this situation where she sees her friend every day, she has that uh, interaction. And then, like I said, she's in three separate extracurricular activities that are three separate groups of people. And then also there's just her social group that's made up of homeschoolers that she meets with once or twice a week. So not a concern. I think that she's probably socializing more now than she did when she was actually in school. Since you have full control over the curriculum that you choose and how you're going to homeschool, um, what are some of like the, the values, you know, we talked about time management for a second, like rewarding, getting your work done early. Um, What kind of values are you wanting to kind of instill in her? At 13, things are very black and white with them. So one of our main struggles and I guess things that we've been trying to instill is that, very few things are black and white and um, trying to negate the use of absolutes and things like that. So just maybe to have them um, have the capability to see things and then make their own decision opposed to just seeing things very black and white. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and you are located in Sarasota, Florida, correct? And I hope that the weather is very beautiful. And thank you for all your time today and just sharing your, uh, your recent experience and uh, your opinions on homeschooling. Thank you so much. You're welcome.